Hey there, chapter 20. I was right about the weather today. I hope the little crocus buds have wool tiny blankets because the temperature dipped back into the 30s and our classroom was chilly when we rolled in this morning. The public address system blared the usual Monday morning announcements about bake sales and soccer practice. Most of the time, no one in H5, not even Mrs. Shannon, pays much attention. The craziness of the morning takes over. Mrs. Shannon has managed to get us a Wii game. I don't know how. Willie loves the baseball program. I have learned to keep out of his way while he pretends to hit the ball as he watches the screen. Sometimes his swing goes wide. A hit, he cries with triumph, and then he tries to run the bases of the classroom. Even Freddie can't keep up with him. I usually sit in the corner with my headphones on and try and tune them all out. But today I'm listening carefully to the bulletin. My heartbeat speeds up and I jerk my arms with excitement when I hear the principal say, all students who wish to try out for the Whiz Kids quiz team, please report to Mr. Dimming's room after school. I am nervous all day long. I didn't tell Rose what I was planning to do. I thought about it and then decided not to. What if she thought it was a stupid idea? I didn't think I could take that. Then I spilled tomato soup all over the front of my blouse at lunchtime. And even though Catherine tried to clean it up, you cannot get red stuff out of a white shirt. I felt like such a slob. I wish I had thought of that in the morning. I would have told mom to pack a change of clothes for me. It's still hard for me to remember that I can say things like this now. I didn't go to my inclusion classes all day. I wanted to study until the last minute. But as soon as the last bell rang, I grabbed Catherine's arm. Hurry to Mr. D's room. Even though I'm in an electric wheelchair, we push it to manual and she pushes me. I am too nervous to drive myself. When we arrive at Mr. Deming's room, there's a group of kids from my history class whispering together and going over note cards. They look up, surprised, when Catherine wheels me in. Hi, Melody, Rose says. What are you doing here? Her voice is not as friendly as usual. Quiz team, I type. She can't be on the team, I hear Claire whisper to Jessica, wrinkling her nose. She's from the other room. Molly thinks that's funny and screeches like a black, a blue jay when she laughs. I decide I'm going to ignore them, even though I feel anger rising. I have to stay focused. Several more students file into the room from both grades five and six. I don't know the sixth graders very well. They have different recess times. I wonder, are they smarter? They've had more years to learn stuff. A few kids point at me and whisper. Mr. Deming hurries in, carrying a stack of papers sealed in plastic. He scans the room to see who's there. He frowns a little when he sees me, but he sets up the test papers on his desk and greets us all. Welcome, he says. I'm so glad that so many of you have chosen to try out for the competition this afternoon. It's gonna be challenging, but fun. Are there any questions before we get started? Of course, Connor has a question and raises his hand. Yes, Connor, Mr. Deming says with a good natured sigh. Will we get pizza during practices like we did last year? Don't you think you should make the team first, Rodney yells out. Rodney is right, one thing at a time. Mr. Dimming lifts the stack of test papers from his desk and holds them up like they're a treasure. I hold my hand, I hold in my hand the official test questions from the National Whiz Kids headquarters in Washington, DC. I will be reading the questions to you, just like in real competitions. And then he stops and stares. Everyone looks around to see what has inter interrupted him. It's me. Mr. Deming taps the stack of papers for a moment, clears his throat, and says to Catherine, you know, I don't think it's appropriate for Melody to be here. This is not a recreational activity that's just for fun. The purpose of this meeting is for us to choose our official team. He isn't even speaking to me. He's looking right over my head at Catherine as if I were invisible. Now I am mad. I turn up the volume on the MetaTalker very loud. I am here to take the test. Mr. Deming blinks. Melody, I don't want your feelings to get hurt. This test is really hard. I am very smart, I type. I just don't want you to get hurt, Melody. He sounds sort of sincere. I'm tough, I type. You go, girl, Rose suddenly says from the front of the room, and a few other kids start to clap their support. Makes me feel a little better, just a little. Catherine speaks up. By law... You know this. She cannot be excluded. Yes, but read the questions to the students just as you had planned. They will write their answers on notebook paper. Melody will record her answers and then print them out for you. 
How do we know you're not going to help her, Claire says. Because I won't be in the room, Catherine replies. Too bad, because some of you might need some help. Catherine grins at Claire, and Claire looks away. I tell Catherine, go now. Matter of fact, I almost push her away. But thank you. Your mom is coming to pick you up? Yes, I type. Well, good luck, Melody. You're a champ, no matter what. You got that? I got it. I wave at her as she leaves the room. Mr. Deming shrugs his shoulder and continues with the directions. There are 100 quiz questions. I will read each prompt one time and each answer only once. You will have 30 seconds to record each response. You will only write the capital letter A, B, C, D, and sometimes E. Are there any questions? Claire's hand shoots up. Yes. How do we know Melody doesn't have answers stored in her machine? Us normal people aren't allowed to use machines. Why are you so worried about Melody? Rose answers before Mr. Deming gets a chance. Are you scared she's going to get a higher score than you? No. Well, then be quiet so we can get started. Mr. Deming smiles to Rose. Students, get out two sheets of paper, one to write on and one to cover your answers. We believe in honesty, but an extra sheet of paper can't hurt. Everyone shuffles to find papers and pens. Then a quiet expectation falls over the room. Mr. Deming unseals the official test and opens to the first page. Let us begin, he says, his voice suddenly sounding very official. Number one, the capital of Colombia is A. Brussels, B. Santiago, C. Bogota, D. Jakarta. He pauses while everyone scribbles their answers. I punch the letter C, good old Mrs. V in her capital quiz cards. Number two, Mr. Deming continues, gerontology is the study of A, the elderly, B, gerons, C, germs, D, rocks and jewels. I punch the letter A. So far, pretty easy. The test continues for the next 30 minutes or so. He asks questions about atoms and clouds, fish and mammals, famous religions and dead presidents. Some of the questions I know for sure. I guess on a couple. The math questions make me sweat. This is the hardest, most exciting thing I have ever done. The very last question is a killer. Number 100, Mr. D says, relief in his voice. The small intestine of a large adult, if stretched out vertically, would measure how long? A, 8 to 12 inches. B, 1 to 2 feet. C, 3 to 7 feet. D, 20 to 23 feet. I punch in the letter D, hoping I'm guessing right, and breathe a sigh of relief. It's over. Pencils down, please, Mr. Deming tells us. Make sure your name is on your paper, then cover it with a cover sheet and pass it to me. As everyone gathers paper and scribbles their names hurriedly, I push the print button on the Metatalker. A slim sheet with my answers emerges from the side. Mr. Deming walks back to where I sit and rips it off. He doesn't even look at me. We're done here, he tells the class. Your parents were told what time to pick you up. But if everyone, anyone has a problem with a ride, just let me know. I won't leave the building until everyone has safely left the school grounds. I am the last one out. My mom will probably come in and get me, but I want to leave on my own. So I turn on my chair and wheel around to face the door. Melody, Mr. D calls me. I turn back around. I hope you are not discouraged by all this. I was only trying to protect you from getting hurt. I'm okay, I tell him. I'll be announcing the scores and the members of the team tomorrow. I just don't want you to be too disappointed. I understand. And then I ask him, top eight scores get picked, right? Yes, there are four team members and four alternates. I am tired and I know I've started to drool a little. I'm sure he thinks I'm a dunce and a sloppy one at that. I feel like the red stain on my blouse is screaming out. Okay, good night then. Good night, Melody. See you tomorrow. And, uh, you might want to wipe your mouth. I rub the sleeve of my shirt against my lips, the tomato-stained shirt. I can only imagine what he's thinking. I almost bump into my mom as she hurries in. How did you do, sweetie? She says. Okay, I guess. To Mr. D, she says thank you for giving her the opportunity to participate. My pleasure, Mrs. Brooks. Melody is a delight, and I'm amazed she has been able to achieve as much as she has. Yeah, right. A delight with a drippy lips and a dirty shirt. Let's go, Mom, I type. I need to go to the bathroom, and really, I just want to go home.